right. Hey guys, Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. Today is absolute value equations. This is part of a series on algebra worksheets. Okay, so a bunch of algebra worksheets, a bunch of answers to all these kinds of algebra topics. The ultimate algebra worksheet guide, and this is one of those videos in the series. So let's go ahead and jump in. What what does it mean when they say absolute value? So absolute value is this weird thing that basically means that you take a number and make it positive. Another way to describe it is like the distance away from zero, which is always like a positive number, like distance is always positive. Um, but it's it basically makes the number positive. So if it's positive, nothing happens. But if it's negative, it becomes positive. So it's not like a negative sign, right? Like a negative sign changes the sign. So like if it's positive, then it would become negative if I, you know, multiplied it by negative one or whatever, right? But absolute value is not like multiplying by negative one because it doesn't necessarily change the sign. It just makes it positive if it wasn't already. But that means that there still could be two options. It could be positive or negative, the thing inside of the absolute value. So what you do then is you make it so that it's both. It could be either one. So 6m for number 1 here, it could just be 6m. Maybe it's just 6m. Or maybe it's negative 6m. Because what if, if it was negative 6m, if it was negative, then I'd take the absolute value, and it would be positive again. right? So it wouldn't matter if it's 6m or negative 6m. Right, because then I would take the absolute value and it would become positive. So it creates two equations with two possible answers. Right, so I divide that one by negative 6 and divide this one by 6. Right. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. 42 goes into 6 7 times. Right, so it goes into negative 6, negative 7 times. And then here it would be 7 times. So the answer then is positive or negative 7 positive or negative 7. That's one way to do it. You can split it into two equations. You can sometimes keep it as one equation. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. So it could be either negative 6x or positive 6x, right? So if it, just because it's negative doesn't really make a difference. Like I I'd, I'd had the same two answers for number 2, whether there was a negative inside the absolute value marks or not. So let's just say, well, could be negative or positive. So you do this. Then you divide by plus or minus. This might be really trippy. So if this is really trippy for you, then don't worry about it. But this is a really fast way to get the answer because 30 divided by 6 is 5, right? So it'd be plus or minus 5. Whew. Okay. So if that threw you off, it's okay. You can stick with the method from number 1. But if that looks like, oh, that's it? That's all I have to do to get the answer? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to split it up. But sometimes you don't. And if you don't have to split it up, you can just put plus or minus. And then that would be the answer. All right, so that's it for number two there. Okay, I'm going to switch colors like I always do. Switch colors about every two. Um, this one is going to be just a little bit different because I can't just do plus or minus in the front of this. Um, I could do plus or minus to the three. So notice on number one, I just split it into two equations. Number two, I did plus or minus 6x. I can also do plus or minus 3. Because if I had done plus or minus k minus 10, I'd have to put a parentheses around it. When you get rid of absolute value, I haven't needed to use parentheses yet because there hasn't been anything but like one thing inside the absolute value. But if I wanted to do plus or minus k minus 10, I'd have to do plus or minus parentheses k minus 10 parentheses. Okay, so it's just easier to do plus or minus 3 here. I'm going to use this little method again, but notice if I do plus or minus 3 plus 10, meaning I'm going to add 10 to both sides, it kind of presents a problem. Because then, you know, it's just it gets a little crazy, right? So let's let's do this. Let's start from the beginning, 
and let's do the same thing. So that that number that number two method that I did there doesn't always work out really well. It it would still work. I'd still have to split it up eventually though. So why don't we just split it up now? K minus ten equals three. Right? One of the versions is always going to be just get rid of the bars and that's the equation. The other one is the opposite of that. So you either make what's on the left side of the equal sign negative or you make what's on the right side of the equal sign negative. You could do either one, but you have to be careful because if I'm going to make k minus 10 negative, that means k would be negative. 10 would be a plus now. It would be negative k plus 10. Okay, So I could do negative k plus 10. I th have to take the opposite of what's on the left side equals 3. But it might be easier instead to just take the opposite of 3. k minus 10 equals negative 3. You can make what's on the left hand side or on the right hand side negative for the other version. Right? So let's go back in here. There's two versions. Two versions. One, there's the positive version. And then two, there's the negative version. But you can either make the left side negative, left side negative, or the right side negative, right side negative. All right, don't do both, because then you would just be, you know, creating another positive version, basically. But you have two main options when you're getting that second version. The first version is easy. You just leave it alone. You just take off the absolute value marks, and that's it. The second version, you either make the left side negative or the right side negative. Okay, So just whatever is going to be easier. I mean, if you want to just do the left side negative each time just for consistency, then go for it. But it might you know, be a little bit harder. You might want to make sure you're a little careful. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. So plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. We're going to do plus 10s all around here. So then here, k equals 13. That's one of our answers. And then here, k equals negative 3 plus 10, which is 7. There's the other answer. All right, so that's, that's our two answers. All right, number four, uh, same thing. Kind of only have one thing here, so it's going to be either this or this. And we could have made the x over 7 negative as well. Okay, You can make the left side negative or the right side negative. Uh, we're going to times 7 on both sides. And if some of this looks a little confusing, if you feel like I'm going a little too fast, it's because in other videos, I've already solved a bunch of equations and inequalities and stuff like that and showed you, like, you know, what do you do with negatives? How do you add, subtract, multiply, and divide negatives? All that kind of stuff is in other worksheets, so I don't spend as much time on that here. If you need more practice on um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing negatives, or just solving equations in general, then check out the other videos that are in the playlist. Right? There will be a link at the end of the playlist. You can just skip to the end and see the little card thing that pops up, and that will take you to other videos that talk about that topic. So I'm not going to talk too much more about that. All right. Uh, number five, same thing, right? And if it's if it's the same thing as what I've already done before, then I'm not going to spend too much time talking about how to solve it because it's nothing new for this worksheet here. All right, so I'll remember that. If we come across something new, then we'll stop for a second, talk about it. How do you solve this new thing? All right, but five and six, nothing really is new going on here. Right, so leave it alone, and then do an opposite version. This time I chose to make the 3 positive. Right, so I'm going to divide by 3, divide by negative 3, so we get negative 5 and 5. All right, all pretty straightforward so far. We're going to run into a new thing, though. Number 7 is a new thing. It's new because up until now, 1 through 6, they've all been the same in that there's nothing else but what's inside the absolute value. Now there's something outside the absolute value. 
So there's actually two stages to solving these. You solve like normal without splitting it up first. 56 divided by 7 is going to be 8. Okay, so the absolute value of n is equal to 8. Right? So I just solved that normally. I didn't split it up first. Notice I didn't split it up. You only split it up once you have the absolute value by itself. Right? So there's like two stages to solving. And this is kind of what I've talked about before when I was talking about SADMEP as opposed to PEMDAS, right? So you have SADMEP. And this is the, the solving before the absolute value. Then you have, let's use a different uh, color here, maybe, um, uh, maybe just a, a shade of gray here. So ins inside a parenthesis, so an absolute value is a kind of grouping. You can kind of treat it like a parenthesis a little bit. Inside of a parenthesis in PEMDAS would be another PEMDAS. Well, inside of a parenthesis in SADMAP is another SADMAP. If you're wondering where I got that from, it's literally just PEMDAS spelled backwards. Again, this is in other videos, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this. But the black sad map here, you look for subtracting and acting and adding on both sides, then dividing and multiplying, then exponents outside of the absolute value. Then when you unlock the absolute value by splitting it into two equations, then you do another sad map. So there's two sad maps. There's two stages of solving. And that's what we have here. We did one of the stages of solving. Then once we break open this absolute value, we're actually done because there's really not much else to do. And those are our two answers. Same thing with number eight. So I'm going to multiply both sides by five. All right, absolute value of m equals 15, which means m is equal to plus or minus 15. Right, I'm doing that plus or minus trick again. Right, there's not really much to do, not really much solving, so I can just say, oh, we'll do plus or minus 15 then. Right, because think about it. If m was negative 15, what's the absolute value of negative 15? Positive 15. And then the absolute value of positive 15 is positive 15. Right, it makes it positive. So those are the two answers there. And that's kind of what we do. We have to just solve it twice. So as these get more complicated, that's really all we're doing. We're just solving twice. Right, negative 3. Negative 3, absolute value of p equals 4, which means p is equal to plus or minus 4. Same thing here, minus 2, minus 2. Right, absolute value of m equals 9, which means m is equal to plus or minus 9. Boom, bang, bing. And new color. Same thing here. It's getting really repetitive now. So this is 1. I meant to put a 1 there. So n is equal to plus or minus 1. Here, same thing. Multiply by 7 on both sides. Absolute value of x is equal to 35. So x is equal to plus or minus 35. Nothing's really that difficult right now, but it will start to get a little bit more difficult. And if you look, we're already at the answers here. We're almost done. This is a short worksheet. So this will be a shorter video, which means we're rounding off this video already. It's crazy. Um, so before we get to the end, I wanted to make sure I told you about a free guide that I have. It's called the five math mistakes everyone makes and how to avoid them. It's um, a little bit of an older PDF that I made a while back to show you what some common math mistakes were and how to avoid them. And it is a really good guide and I would recommend getting it, but I'm also working on revamping it into kind of the, the ultimate guide to not missing a math problem. So probably by the next time I put out one of these videos, we will have that new guide. And I'm putting together that guide for you so that when you go through it and you apply some of the things that are in there, all the things that I share with all of my private tutoring students that really help them to do better in the, their classes on the SAT and in classes ranging from Algebra 1 to Calc 3. They implement what's in there and they do really well. And it's just a lot of the same stuff that I share with every student that helps every student, whether you're in Algebra 1 or Calc 3 or somewhere in between. So these are the answers for these.
right here. Move on to the next one. There's two steps to solving this here as well. So I'm going to divide by four. So yeah, go ahead and grab that free guide. If you haven't already, the link will be in the description below. And then by next week, I'll have another free guide, a revamped version of that, that you guys can grab. And why am I blanking on this? I want to save 18. Let's see, take half, 28, 28, 14. 14, right? Oh yeah, because that would be seven times eight. Yeah, so that'd be 14. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's another, I think there's another guide that I have too. I have a, several different guides. One of them is actually a personality quiz. So if you like personality quizzes, it's a math personality quiz to show you what kind of math might I be the best at? And then what kind of careers would that lead me into? Like what kind of careers would use that math the most? So check that out too. That'll be in the description below as well if you are interested in that. Um, so I'm going to do this one just a little bit differently. If you've noticed on 14 here, I've got plus or minus 14 minus 8. So this would be the same thing as 14 minus 8 or negative 14 minus 8, which is just adding. 14 minus 8 would be what? 6, right? And then negative 14 minus 8, what would that be? It would be like, uh, what, 22? Negative 22? You're adding them up because there's two negatives. So we end up with two answers here. And that is it for that one. I did not want to highlight. I want to draw. There we go. All right, so as we're rounding these off, um, I'm not really, really good at multitasking, which is why I slowed down a little bit while I was telling you about some free guides. But here, this is pretty much all the same stuff, right? I'm going to do all the solving that I can do without getting into the absolute value. Then I break open that absolute value. And negative 70 or positive 70. I could have also done negative 7m or positive 7m. Usually it's better to make the other side negative or positive, not the left side. So m is actually just going to be either plus or minus 10. All right, here, same thing. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. x over 7 equals 1, which means... Um, when I break that open, right, so it's going to be x over 7 equals plus or minus 1. Then I times it by 7. I'm squeezing that in there because I don't really have a lot of space. I kind of took up a lot of space on number 14. Um, when I times by 7, I get x equals plus or minus 7. All right, and we're at the end already. That's crazy. Let's go ahead and check these out. So 8, 8. Remember, I'm not going to go inside of that absolute value just yet. It's 24. Then I go inside the absolute value, right? So negative 9 plus b equals 24, or negative 9 plus b equals negative 24. So add 9, add 9, add 9, add 9. The reason why leaving the left side alone and changing the right side is usually better is because then you just, you know in both equations you have to do the same step or two to solve, the, to solve it fully. Um, so that's going to be 33. And this one's going to be uh, negative, why can I not math right now? Negative 15. Whew. All right, I'll ratio on this last one if you would like. On your mark, get set, go. Solve that, solve that. B plus 2 equals nothing. Nothing. B plus 2 equals negative 7. B equals 5 equals negative 9. And there we go. Let me know in the comments below if you beat me. But that was it. That's that's all there is to it. For some reason, it looks like I'm using two different colors. Looks like 17 and 18 are two different colors. Did I use two different colors? Maybe I did. Or maybe I'm just really going colorblind. So there was actually one scenario that they didn't touch on in this particular worksheet that I want to show you. All right, this is a little bonus. But before we get to the bonus, let me show you the... Uh, the answers real quick. So I'm going to scroll kind of slow here. But you can always Google this as well. Right? You can Google this worksheet. You just Google it and it'll come right up and it'll have the answers in it. It's all nice and neat. And there you go. So the other thing that could happen, and this is a trick question. So the trick question 
would be what if the absolute value of like let's say um, 3x was equal to negative 21. Okay, so this is a trick question because it looks like I can just solve this, right? So, so don't try to solve. Don't solve. Because, think about it for a second. The absolute value makes a number positive. So, whatever x is, it's going to get multiplied by 3, and then I'm going to take the absolute value. That means, after I take the absolute value, the smallest that number could possibly be would be 0. Right? 0 is sort of like both positive and negative and neither all at once. It's the smallest number that I could possibly get from an absolute value, right? Or it could be some, some positive number that's more than 0. But 0 would be the smallest possible number after I take an absolute value, right? It can't get any smaller, which means that after I take the absolute value, it has to be a positive number. It cannot be negative, which means this has no solution. No solution. There's nothing you could do. Because, like, let's say x was 7, right? Well, if x is 7, then 7 times 3 is 21. The absolute value of 21 is, well, 21. But that's not equal to negative 21. What if x was negative 7? Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, but I have to take the absolute value of that, which is positive 21. I'm stuck. There's nothing. So solve it a little bit, right? So, so notice on these last ones, you had to solve it a little bit before you got to the absolute value part. Solve it a little to get to the absolute value part so that the absolute value part is by itself, right? The first sad number, the black sad number here. Right, this one right here. Once you've done that and you've got the absolute value part by itself, don't forget to look and see if it's equal to a negative. If it's equal to a negative, there's nothing you can do. That's it. There's no solution. Right? And that will happen sometimes, and that could be a trick question that your teacher puts on your upcoming quiz or test. So watch out for that. And that's it for this video. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you want to subscribe and see more videos like this, go ahead and do that as well. And I'll see you again in the next episode of this series.